we basically we will be looking into how to trade safe haven commodities the session we have in mind is uh, going to be divided into two uh, two parts the first part will be a small conversation between me and adamos about tips and tricks on what to look for and how this uh, tradable instrument uh, behave especially in times of crisis such as uh, the italian banking crisis right now we have or uh, the, the Brexit crisis that, that EU is facing. Then the second part, we'll be looking into market analysis. And the, the post part of the second is a part will be basically given to you as questions and answers. But before I start those things, uh, I just want to bring your attention to a brief risk disclaimer that trading on leverage carries a high level of risk and there, therefore it may not be suitable for everyone. Before investing, in Forex, you should understand the risks involved and uh, may, it may it be necessary acquire a third party consultancy on, on your activities and never invest the money that you cannot afford losing. Uh, now that's off our chest. Let's, let's actually start, Adamos. Uh, what do you think people really should look for in times of uh, banking crisis like the Ita Italian banking sector is facing right now? So, okay, um, so in time of crisis, always the safe haven assets are doing better than uh, other assets. And uh, when I'm saying assets, I mean currencies, bonds, uh, commodities, uh, all the kind of uh, financial systems that you can trade. You need to look at the, <coughs> at the assets that they provide lower yields, uh, and with lower yield, the yield reflects the risk of each asset. So. Um, and of course, the gold one, the gold is one uh, financial instrument that is doing great almost at all times uh, because it's inflation on hedge, it's also safe haven assets, and um, it, most of the times it works better than uh, other financial instruments. Of course, there have been times of gold that demand has been booming, and then when the economic activity was improving, we saw that the demand for the gold was decreasing but in general gold demand is remaining stable over the years and uh, is increasing in value according to uh, inflation so <coughs> it, the gold actually has been increasing over the years and that was due to uh, that some factors like um, it's a storable commodity and you can store it you can have it after uh, 10, 20, 100 years, and it's going to be the same commodity like it has been uh, uh, centuries ago. So it's a kind of commodity that holds its value, and you can have it uh, at any point in time uh, to may transform it in cash and uh, meet your objectives or meet your financial uh, <coughs> obligations. So it, that, this is the main reasons that the gold has been a safe haven, actually. And it has been like that for centuries now. And of course, it's not going to stop. And uh, um, what do you think that it will, it will happen to, I, I mean, like, what do you think will happen to gold? Uh, well, uh, if we see that some kind of negotiation is made with, with the EU and the UK, do you think that it will have a bigger impact on, on a bearish side or, or not? Um, as of, as of now, we see that the gold is around 130, 1,370. Uh, so the price, if we see a solution between UK and EU, and eventually this kind of Brexit is sorted out, um, I don't expect a lot of uh, decline in the gold anyway, anyhow. And uh, <coughs> if we see this case where the economic activity will come back and expectation will uh, be more uh, optimistic about the economic activity, uh, the gold demand will still remain because uh, inflation is likely, inflation expectations are likely to increase. As we increase the economic activity, inflation is rising. So again, uh, the gold demand is likely to remain. It's not going to fall. Other currency pairs uh, like the yen, Japanese yen is going to decline because uh, it's actually a more safe haven asset than the gold. <coughs> and the reason for that is that 
gold is, is working very good also during high inflation times. And at the moment, it's not only the risk uh, averse sentiment that prevails in the market, it's also uh, the central banks are applying uh, very aggressive monetary policies. And for that, that is an extra reason for the gold going up. <clears throat> All right. And, uh, and what do you think about uh, the, the Italian banking sector? Do, do, do you think that it will be contagious? Most likely, yes. I mean, uh, banks uh, between the European Union, they are uh, interrelated in many ways. And uh, also the biggest bank of the European Union is the European Central Bank. And European Central Bank holds debt of a lot of countries in the European Union, ma mainly of Greece. But of course, if we see something going wrong in Italy, then this is going to uh, trigger a domino effect. And then, um, yeah, this is going to cause a lot of issues for the European Union. I know, I know you are Cypriot. Uh, okay, <laughs> other people don't know. Maybe, can you share com a couple of comments about what what you felt during the Cyprus crisis, when uh, when the when the uh, Troika decided that they, they'll actually uh, have a haircut on everyone. When, when I heard about the haircut, the, the initial decision, which was 5% uh, from all deposits below 100,000 and uh, above 100,000 was 10%, that actually my, my initial thought, okay, they are taking money from our accounts, but the second thought was, okay, this is a solution. Mm -hmm. And 5% is not much. However, <clears throat> because, okay, the the interest rates of uh, deposits in Cyprus were like 4 to 5 percent for 10, 20 years before that. So right. mainly this was a solution. However, at the end we end up with uh, one bank closing down and uh, people lost their money. People that had above 100,000 deposits, they lost everything above 100,000. They only uh, remain with the 100,000 because it, this was guaranteed by the European, by by the ECB actually. So the first haircut, uh, <clears throat> in my opinion, was a good solution um, versus what we had at the end. And now uh, and of course, let me actually psychology... ask you for yes. just a second. Why am I? Uh, why I'm really asking about it? You know that mm -hmm. the ECB made the the changes to to bailout mm -hmm. the law. Uh, throughout the Europe, that mm -hmm. as of January the 1st, 2016, mm -hmm. all the banks that are going to be bailed out are subject to Cyprus kind of a bailout structure. And okay. you must know one thing about Italy. The people who have money in Italy are the grandmas and grandpas, basically people saving up for their, uh, for their retirement. Yeah. And I can tell you, well, they have well above hundred thousand mm dollar. -hmm. So it means that these people are, are actually the the elderly ones who are gonna be affected. And what does it really tell you actually? Well I want you to answer it if you could please and I'll I'll actually share my my personal opinion as well in just a sec. Um okay let's look at both in two cases. One is the Greece case and one is the Cyprus case. Mm -hmm. Because, okay, they didn't do any bail-in in Greece, they didn't make any haircut, but they have increased taxes. And they have increased taxes uh, so much. So, uh, in my opinion, the Greece case was uh, a wrong uh, management of the crisis there. If they were following a bail-in um, Anyway, the, the crisis there was not banking in the beginning, was most was government debt <coughs> the issue. But mainly, uh, in case of a banking crisis, instead of increasing taxes to save the banks, in my opinion, it's better to have a universal uh, haircut of not more than 10%. But, okay, I understand that this is not good, is taking money out of uh, people's uh, bank accounts, uh, but eventually, in the long term, could be proven better than increasing the taxes. 
because there is a lot of tax evasion and that's happening from people who have the knowledge to do that. Uh, <coughs> in making the haircut, you are actually uh, taking the money in order to improve the condition of the economy in the long term. In the short term, of course, there is a big shock. Uh, nobody trusts the bank, the banks anymore, and uh, you need to pass one, two years in order to build the trust again. And uh, yeah, you know where, where I come from, where I come from originally, and uh, that's the post-Soviet Union area. Uh, mm -hmm. People tend to keep their money in their uh, well in their bed, yes. <laughs> just to. Yes. Just to you know, have this uh, kind of a uh, feeling that it's safe, and I think I think we are moving a little uh, with, especially with the Western banks now. We are moving on that direction because I have uh, the rumors at the moment that the Commerce Bank, which is the second largest bank in Germany, is about to go bankrupt. I have the rumors that uh, the UBS, uh, which is one of the largest banks in in Europe, which uh, which has been hit massively by the by the brexit vote and uh, also they they have a stake in 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 Italy these are rumors of course they are not facts I don't have facts yet so yeah it, like in Cyprus there were rumors before before the haircut exactly and uh, people who say that we didn't know it was around newspapers two three six months ago mm -hmm. so so we, Again, we have a, a, a very similar structure right now. That's why I wanted to talk about it. And what will happen actually? If you look into the market, I am very much convinced that the ECB will come uh, come up with something uh, this week. It must be this week, maybe next week, to to just ease up the market. It is very very likely that they'll do so. And also uh, we mm -hmm. have the NFP etc. So it is likely that we will see some kind of easing up in the market because the, the central banks cannot just expect yeah. or enable the market to, to have so much of uh, you know, unhappiness or dissatisfaction from the central banks. So that being said, I think that it, it is logical to expect the gold still to, to continue on its bullish move, given the fact that uh, th there is kind of a distrust towards the paper money. Uh, because they just keep on printing, right? So uh, I think we could expect it to rise uh, towards 1,388 to 1,400 level. Like we, we saw the gold actually rising towards uh, the very same level back in 2013 December, if I'm not mistaken. We, we had similar uh, movement on, on gold. So, uh, the, and if I'm not mistaken, that was uh, due to Greasy issue that time. Yeah. So uh, we can we can expect a similar thing, but at this time, well, Italy is much bigger than Greece for for mm -hmm. it, uh, for its uh, impact on on the EU. They they are one of the G7 countries. They they are one of the most impact. Developed. Come again. Developed economies. Exactly, and. Uh, you know, people who save money in these banks are the elderly people. People who voted the UK or, or, or Great Britain out of the EU were the elderly peoples because uh, there is there is generation gap in, in the EU where, where we have a number of, uh, well, uh, elderly people um, exceeding the number of uh, youth who, who are, uh, you know, pro-European and pro-Union, etc. So uh, I'm convinced that we are going to be looking into more distrust and uh, instability in the market. And uh, the biggest move is going to be happening, uh, of course, on, on uh, gold. However, uh, the thing that we discussed before uh, with you uh, three weeks ago, that uh, Swiss franc is going to be one of the biggest movers, I think it's going to be still there. Because uh, mm -hmm. although it's not really a commodity, it, it, it is still a safe haven yeah. asset uh, instrument. So we will see. And, uh, and on the other hand, it might even be negative impact on Swiss franc immediately, maybe. For, for one fact that uh, they are neighboring countries, Switzerland and Italy. And uh, Switzerland has in, uh, invested too much uh, in 
in the Italian infrastructure. They just kept on, on buying bonds. I, uh, from what I know, they have bought uh, Italian government bonds. They have uh, invested in Italian banks, etc. And uh, UBS, uh, you know where they are from. Mm -hmm. Yep. So now let's let's actually uh, look more into you know the market from the technical analysis perspective to see where these things can fit in. Uh, shall we? Shall we look in uh, yes. gold first? Sure. Yeah, this is uh, the gold here. We can see that on the chart. Can you see? Yeah. Great. So actually, this looks like a head and shoulder, reverse head and shoulder pattern. Mm -hmm. OK, it's not uh, exactly for theoretically perfect, but uh, we can see that it's kind of uh, head and shoulders, or at least a reversal uh, trading pattern. The uptrend in the weekly time frame has already established. We see a higher high and a higher low as well. <coughs> okay, price has now found a resistance at $1,372. And this is the 161.8% of the last move down from uh, 1,303 to 1,200. So here we could see sideways a bit for the gold. And perhaps after the NFP, uh, which could be proven um, negative for the US dollar, we could see the gold rising even higher. And the next target, of course, is at the 261.8% of Fibonacci extension at 1,472. If we go to the daily time frame, of course, technical indicators are not yet uh, overbought in, uh, in the weekly time frame, so we may see. Uh, prices not being in the way that. And uh, in the day time frame, we can see that uh, there is an uptrend as well. We see a steeper uptrend as well after the uh, June 24th uh, referendum. We saw the Brexit event and we see this big control here. Again, prices have actually moved to a new weekly high. Uh, today <coughs> in the daily. So we see prices at 1,372 and they're testing fresh highs. Stochastic is a bit uh, overbought and that indicates that the resistance at 1,372 may hold for some time, uh, maybe for this week. Moving averages are below prices. So technically, even on the daily, we are on the bullish side. If we go to the intraday, and we'll have a closer look at the recent candles. We can see here uh, a sword candlestick, right, Jakub, as you said, as you it, say. It is actually so a this continuation is candle. This one? Yeah, it is a, it is a continuation okay. candle from my perspective, but it, 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 is not a, it is not a confirmed one because of the fact that it didn't make a higher high than the previous candle. OK. Um, okay, according to the theory, this is a hanging man. Exactly. Right? So, based on the theory, uh, this is giving him some uh, retracement expectations. And uh, <clears throat> based on that, we might see a sideways. This is what I'm expecting for the gold because uh, there is a strong resistance over the weekly and the daily time frame. So, but I still expect that the gold uh, over the medium term will continue to higher levels. Investors, of course, are looking. 1,358 mm -hmm. level is very reliable level to expect a retracement to. Yeah, yeah, this is the first stop. It's support, only seven actually. seven dollar difference from where we are now, mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. it coincides yeah. with your uh, with the previous highest high so far. Exactly. Exactly that. Yeah, happened. this is the peak we saw on June 24th, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if you we, if we look into the market from a little more closer, uh, well, a look, we would see that the overall 1,358 level has been historically important uh, from the mm -hmm. resistance perspective. Just, just a little different uh, from there. So, uh, so it's it, very much like, yeah. but uh, I, I'm actually going to ask you a, a question. I have my mm -hmm. personal sell limit order 
at uh, thirteen hundred ninety one dollar. Okay. And uh, if we really look into the market from that perspective, uh, we just need to look at it actually on daily time frame to to be able to see it uh, more clearly. Yeah. Uh, we can see that this level has been historically important. I mean, thirteen hundred. Uh, 88 to 1395 level uh, it has seen uh, well the market has acted as a uh, well significantly for this uh, news in march of uh, 2014 if you look into it uh, we have seen the market reacting to it of course uh, in uh, august uh, of uh, 2013 as well so these are, uh, this has been uh, this level has been a significant yeah. support resistance level in the history, and the biggest mm -hmm. actually reversals took place in the last three years for for this level, exactly the, the level that you are you are highlighting. So, mm -hmm. are you, would you be expecting some kind of a hike by the NFP for that for that level? Uh, <clears throat> I don't know. I cannot make a prediction about the NFP now um, because I'm also waiting for the ADP uh, data tomorrow. Uh, however, what is um, <clears throat> what was the last uh, NFP was very negative for the US dollar, and uh, we might see something similar because of um, the negative uh, sentiment due to elections in the USA. There is a bit of uh, pressure on the business sentiment and on and on the um, investment sentiment as well in the real economy. So this is most likely to limit the new hirings in uh, in USA. And uh, also, if we see a negative NFP for the US dollar on Friday, that will also increase. Actually, will put chances for a further reserve rate hike to 0% and that will further decrease the value of the US dollar and uh, when the value of the US dollar is decreasing the gold is rising because it's quoted in US dollars. Exactly. So, yeah. Have you, have a, if have you also, see a negative NFP, have you it's going to be a double about, effect. Have you also heard about this uh, Swiss, uh, Sweden's uh, ban on the gold, uh, well, the, the biggest gold uh, exchange centers bank accounts? No, I didn't hear about it. All right. This is also something uh, strange about gold as well right now, that uh, suddenly mm -hmm. this week, uh, with no notice at all, Sweden and the SEB Bank, SEB, decided to, to ban the, the, the largest ex gold exchange bank account completely. And uh, that's also one of the strange thing. Right after they they have uh, they have banned it, we saw the the gold actually uh, shooting it up because they are one of the largest ones. So I think there is some kind of a, a prediction from the investment banks as well that something is going to be happening, uh, and it's going to be on on gold, uh, and they want to uh, limit the gold exchanges. Uh, so. It might also be an interesting thing. It's it's a little bit of uh, off the subject discussion right now, but uh, you know I'm I'm a libertarian minded person. I believe that uh, all your all your money uh, should should be put in gold and and just leave it for your child uh, or children. You know, <laughs> they they yeah, and the value of the gold is stable. Exactly. Now. Uh, I think we, we have covered it up. Uh, I agree with you that uh, we cannot really predict what's going to be happening to NFP, only we speculate about the technical mm -hmm. uh, targets, which we have done so far. What, what's, what is your, your, your personal outlook for this week? What should we, uh, the traders uh, look for? For this week? Yeah. Hey, mainly on, uh, during NFP weeks, we don't see much of activity until Friday. Except uh, um, cable, of course. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, of course, we have other events in the market. Uh, recently, we see Mark, Mark Carney has spoken yesterday, and he said some very 
important things. So the first thing that they helped from uh, from yesterday is that they have decreased the capital requirements for the banks. So they actually they cut it from 0.5% to 0%. So they the banks are not are, are allowed not to hold any money uh, against uh, <coughs> lending. So they can increase lending. This is actually an indirect monetary uh, measure, uh, more aggressive. So they are actually adding money in the market. And of course, uh, because of that, there is an upside pressure on the inflation, downward pressure on the British pound. And uh, also he said that he stands ready to outcut the rates. And it is very likely that we're going to see that. So fundamentally, I expect the cable to have more reasons to go lower than, uh, than to re retrace. And, um, and then we have GBPN. I mean, uh, investors, hedge funds, they are buying the Japanese yen to cover their risk. And uh, of course, the GBPN has more reasons to go lower and is not uh, quoted in US dollars, so it doesn't get so much affected by the NFP. And um, apart well, from unless, that, unless I will be uh, unless the uh, unless the NFP is so negative, then uh, yeah. that the uh, Japanese yen starts appreciating massively across the board, right? Mm -hmm. Because if if the investors see that the the U.S. economy is getting a big hit, uh, like like we saw in uh, 2008, they are likely to to move back to Japanese yen again, no? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, we see here the Japanese yen on the daily is moving even lower, uh, below uh, new fresh low actually below the bottom uh, it did on the June uh, 24th on the Brexit vote. So, yeah, it has a lot of pressure on it at the moment. And um, yeah, we need to also have in mind that Bank of Japan may intervene. This is something that. It's uh, a factor that's affecting the GBPN uh, currency trading. So, um, And then we go back to the gold. If Bank of Japan adds more stimulus to its already high um, high measures and monetary policy, we, we may see the gold even rising more. So, yeah, everything is interrelated. And, uh, Where do you think yes. that uh, GBP Japanese yen support is lying at? Except, uh, of course, today's lowest low. I don't think that it is a fixed uh, lowest low. If we look in the market, I think uh, we can expect 125 mm -hmm. level, right? It, it is more realistic than... Yeah, this is... Yes, yes, exactly. This is where I put the line now. <laughs> it's like okay. on 125.50, <laughs> so... <laughs> I think it's, it's the next more. Uh, I I just drew my my personal uh, true Fibonacci wave as well, uh, and yeah. the market has been uh, messed up so much. I only used uh, the the the, the pre-Brexit vote uh, three candles for it, and, hmm. and I can see that 200% uh, Fibonacci retracement from the zone is falling right on uh, 126.85 uh, level. So mm -hmm. 126.85 uh, to 125 level is likely to to be the the main uh, level for this pair. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's quite strange level, uh, and but if you look back, it's just like what you did on daily time frame a little earlier. We can see that mm -hmm. uh, more support level uh, has been there overall in the history. Yeah. I mean, going back there, we have had uh, major market movements at the, uh, there. And uh, also, if we look into the USD yen uh, currency pair, which w was the one I was thinking to uh, talk about after the gold, uh, we also see that during on the weekly time frame, it's on a downtrend. It has been on a trend downtrend for all this time. And uh, actually, the downturn has strengthened after the Brexit vote. We saw that penetration of 105.54 and went down e even below 100 level. However, it still remains uh, above 100. 
there are a lot, a lot of discussion if we are going to see again the USDN in a two-digit uh, level. And it's very interesting to wait and see about what is going to happen on that. Here at 100.50, there is a strong support, as we can see here, on the weekly time frame. And in the daily time frame, again, this is on a downtrend. Prices are reviving the bearish uh, sentiment at the moment. One of the best so price action trading ever. <laughs> <laughs> Each time the yeah, market reverts back one. to the moving average, going down. Yeah, giving the chance to reposition on the short side. So yeah, this is very nice uh, trading pattern. It's considered one of the most um, safer strategies, let's say, because you know you are on a downtrend and you get a better price. Exactly. And it is very much likely that we will, we will actually see uh, USD Japanesian collapse further. I, I'm in favor of mm -hmm. seeing it uh, collapse down towards uh, the true Fibonacci wave, 61.8% level. And mm -hmm. I have a buy limit order, except the, the sell order that I had. The, the buy limit order I have is at uh, 0.9405 level. And uh, it means that I'm actually expecting another 600 pips collapse on this. 600 pips, okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, there are multiple factors, even fundamentally, for the USD yen to go lower, because we saw lower manufacturing reports in China. We saw terrorist attacks, uh, I think, two in, days ago in Saudi Arabia. In Saudi. We in have the Brexit. 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 Uh, we have uh, we have the U.S. has way too much stake in in the EU anyway. Mm -hmm. They uh, they are the the biggest trade allies from what I know. Uh, yes. So and th there is it is literally impossible not to expect the U.S. dollar to to get a hit when when the EU gets uh, into instability and uh, you know EU does. N one thing that the world is forgetting about the EU is that they can talk whatever measures they 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 have the the Article 50 this that but it is just a theory you know they have no experience yeah no experience they're like uh, although I I don't really like this uh, Farange uh, Nigel Farange I'm I'm referring to. Uh, mm -hmm. what, what he was saying, but he he has uh, he's right to to some extent. These guys are just sitting there and uh, and just talking about you know some theory coming up uh, like bunch of uh, PhDs and so on also in the in the central banks as well, putting things to 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 econometric calculations and expecting uh, things to obey. To the to the to the mathematics, okay. They they quite often uh, obey, but quite often doesn't mean uh, you know that they will always do so, right? So uh, yes. we need some experience there. We need some out of the, the box thinking there, and uh, I think they 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 better and and the the key for out of the box thinking does not fall with the with the banks. Okay, I think the banks should be 100% excluded in any kind of a econo economic crisis discussion because banks, all they do is to make things even worse. Like we have seen it many times. They, they messed up the, you know, the, the Greece issue started with, uh, with the government uh, debt and uh, later on it turned into a bank issue. We, we have seen uh, many similar cases a small case uh, turning into bank issue because banks tend to get greed, right? And each time greed takes over, the the crisis grows larger. So I am convinced that, uh, well, we will see the U.S. dollar to to get weaker in a in a coming period, especially as we will get to, uh, closer towards the the presidential elections this year. And the, the the biggest winners will be well. We have three champions, actually four, but I'm not gonna mention the the fourth one. The first champion is gonna be gold, of course. The the second champion is gonna be Japanese yen, 
and the third champion is expected to be Swiss franc. And uh, if I know uh, most of the webinar participants today, I can see are are the people from uh, well, are the people uh, trading forex uh, and CFDs. But if you are a person in the U.S. or Canada, your biggest opportunity to trade as well is actually uh, gold mining penny stocks as well. Uh, each time, like yesterday, I know some penny stocks appreciating by 48, 50 percent within just one day, and uh, gold just appreciated slightly, tiny bit. So you gotta really position yourself where uh, where the economic value increases in times of crisis like this, and uh, the commodity silver gold uh, ratio is is the, the biggest impactful uh, well ratio that we can we can see each time the the gap between silver and gold uh, increases it is a sign that another uh, well financial crisis is uh, coming up we, we saw it in 2008 this gap increased and then the the world economy collapsed we have seen it in previous uh, 2000.com bubble that we saw the, then the the economy literally crashed and we we have many many other similar cases so silver is going to be the, also another tradable instrument that you, uh, traders should look into because once the once the issue gets public once the rumors become reality uh, we then see the market the biggest market moves that's indeed where the the biggest uh, well quote comes from buy the rumors sell the facts right so that's it. I'm gonna pass the floor to you, and uh, let's uh, let's also give the floor to to the traders as well if they have any questions for us. I would like to add a comment about the greed and greedy of the banks because up to now the central banks have been giving money to the commercial banks and instead of lending them to the market to the people, they have been actually. Uh, covering positions or taking investment decisions in, in financial instruments so and that is not adding uh, the money into the real economy where the central bankers want that so now we through it in the market we have the helicopter money coming in there's a lot of discussion about helicopter money as a way to increase the the monetary stimulus by them okay. what's the possibility to give uh, okay you you give more money in the market you'll have higher inflation people will spend that money bam it's gone what happened uh, yeah this is what they want they want the people to spend the money in order to increase uh, demand in the economy and uh, start recovering of course it's it's like an one time effect yeah, it's so like, you, want that. you know, we, we learned when I was a kid, I, 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 I was told one thing, give a man f a fish, he will eat it for, for a day, yeah. teach a man how to fish, he'll eat it for a lifetime. Now, uh, they keep on giving the, the man globally, and so far these are the fat men with the banks, okay? <laughs> they just keep on giving those fat men the fisher, it's not just one fish. Yeah. And now they are thinking of giving some fish, uh, well, some fish pieces to the to the other uh, skinny man like myself <laughs> <laughs> to to go and uh, eat for the day. It's not really the solution. It, the, the solution needs to come from within. The solution needs to come with within uh, within stimulus of uh, economic activities rather than uh, just you know stimulus of spending what is economic activity as an example I'll, I'll give you an example they need to think of uh, enabling more entrepreneurial activities especially in times like this where the world is going through innovation after innovation they need to you know encourage people to start up uh, more companies they need to uh, and and one another thing we have these great startups coming up, but then uh, because there is so much of stupid money lying around, some stupid bank decides to invest a billion dollar or ten billion dollar in it just it just to to take the patents for, from them. And then what what happens? Then it dies. 
So we need more uh, instead of, you know, buy out of the, uh, these uh, small startups at, at their early stages. We need more encouragement of growing them into bigger companies because uh, when the big companies take the small ones over, the, the employment opportunities die with them because they they try to create synergies because they have invested money. They need to cost cut in the uh, acquired firms. Uh, you know, more things uh, like that, like what's happening in, in LinkedIn nowadays. We saw the, the Microsoft taking it over. LinkedIn was my, one of my favorite, favorite social media ever. And uh, people were, went very happy that, okay, LinkedIn got so much money. And now we, we hear that uh, Microsoft is planning to, to basically eliminate 10% of the workforce in order to, co to cost cut and, and make some of their money back. You know, we, we have to really look in, uh, when I say we, you and me, we have no in, impact on the global labor force. However, you know, the, the central banks do have, and they need to look into the world taking advantage of uh, these uh, small uh, labor force activities. So that's my, my one cent. All right. We have a question actually from Devon One Y. Uh, he's commenting that uh, you said CHF would be one of the major champions, but I also commented that CHF might collapse uh, due to Italy uh, investments that uh, Switzerland has. Yes, that's correct, but uh, Switzerland has basically diversified uh, their portfolio way too, too large. Their portfolio, uh, the SMB I'm referring to, their portfolio is not just in Italy. They, they have um, major activities, uh, economic activity all, uh, all over the world. So although I'm convinced that uh, if we see the, the collapse of the Italian banks, uh, although I'm convinced that it would be, have an impact on CHF, I am also convinced that it would be short-lived meaning it wouldn't be for a long time. It would be maybe for a day or two, but then it would continue uh, on, on appreciation mode. And I'll again repeat myself that each time the Euro-Swiss franc rises towards uh, 1.10 level, no matter what, I see it as an opportunity to, to sell it, not, not to buy it. So Euro-Swiss CHF should not be appreciating. And we must have sooner or later parity for Euro CHF. It's a must. Uh, okay, uh, Adam, uh, Adamas, would you like to actually look into Aussie dollar? Without us is commenting about if uh, Aussie dollar has finished its pullback and uh, ready to go up. Okay. Um, first of all, this is the weekly uh, time frame. Those USD is mainly in a range uh, pattern between 0 0.7835 top and uh, lower uh, support at 0 0.7146. Okay, this is a big uh, range, but it's on the weekly time frame. Over the daily time frame, um, <coughs> we saw again those USD. It has been actually in sideways recently, so we see it mainly in uh, between 0 0.7645 resistance and support at 0 0.73.04. Uh, so most likely it's going to keep uh, going into sideways. We had the RBA recently uh, holding the monetary policy stable and that actually has uh, proven to be um, a little bit bearish for the OZ, as we can see on the intraday. Let me go to the intraday. So we mainly see here on the H4 that those USD has retraced down because uh, they have been expecting to hear from their bay more hoggish comments, but eventually, more dovish comments, but eventually uh, the, uh, the RBA held the monetary policy and they said that they're going to keep uh, looking at incoming data. So 
mainly that has uh, trigger a retracement in the OZ USD. I don't expect that OZ USD has uh, finished his upside. Uh, however, we see a risk averse sentiment in the market, as we said earlier, and that is adding pressure on the Australian dollar. We remain to see what's going to happen uh, with the uh, Brexit risk because it's something that's adding pressure on the Australian dollar. Also, we need to keep in mind that Australian dollar is correlated with the gold. Gold is rising, so that is giving uh, some support uh, for the demand of the Australian dollar. And mainly, this is the reason why uh, the Aussie USD is in a range trading pattern because it, this is an indecision uh, pattern where we see on one side the risk averse sentiment of the investors and on the other side we see commodities like the gold uh, rising and the uh, Australian economy is exporting a lot of uh, commodities. So that's why we see a range uh, pattern. Therefore, I would expect uh, at least for this week uh, or the next week for the range pattern to continue. And I think uh, we have also uh, resistance for this pair at uh, 0 0.75. It's kind of a dynamic mm -hmm. resistance yeah. if we combine it. And uh, mm -hmm. the support is anyway uh, quite visible, uh, which is uh, at the level of uh, 0 0.73.75 level as well. So we need one of these levels to be broken on either side in order to see whether uh, upside mm -hmm. is limited or, or downside is limited. Uh, unless we see any of these, we cannot really decide. However, uh, from my perspective as well, uh, Adamos, I think that uh, mm -hmm. for today and overall this week, it is likely that we will see 0.7492 to be achieved uh, on, on okay. a bullish side, uh, given the fact mm -hmm. that we, we see a breakout above 0.7460 level. And uh, the mm -hmm. reason why I'm looking for it is because of the last weekend uh, market closing was was at the level of uh, 0 0.7498 level, more or less. So uh, yeah. we had a small gap uh, for the market opening this week. So that gap is likely to be well one more one more time tested, and then we can see possibly the the fur further bearish movement uh, towards the lower boundary one more time. But uh, we got I wouldn't really trade this as you, as you said. You know, it's sideways. Mm -hmm. Sideways, there is no, there is no confirmation. Uh, there is one more question about Gopi asking about USD Japanese yen. If I had a sell uh, by limit order at zero nine, uh, 95 level, uh, sorry, uh, I got to look at it one more time. My um, my buy limit order at uh, USD Japanese yen is at 94.06 level. So that's the level. Uh, this is it so far for, for today, guys. Uh, we had a little bit of a different uh, approach today. I want to once again uh, deliver it to your attention that today's session has been delivered to you by A to Z Forex in association with Fidelis Capital Markets, fcmforex.com. One of the A to Z approved uh, brokers with, with complete uh, STP background. And uh, Adamos uh, can also mention more about uh, the company in a bit as well. But bear in mind that you can take advantage of, uh, of the market with, uh, with uh, Fidelis Capital Markets for the fact that they have no conflict of interest uh, from what we have uh, tested them and, and understood so far. That's why they became an A to Z approved broker. And you can also get yourself a, a lower spread account with just as little as $200 uh, initial deposit. All you need to do is mention that you participated in the A2Z Forex webinar to, to be able to get this account. Otherwise, you got to deposit way more than uh, 2,500. Adamus, yes, would you exactly. like to add anything else? Yes, actually, uh, yes, I would like to add on the comment that you made about the lower spread account. So you can go ahead and open a live account with us, and uh, you can get uh, spreads on Euro USD starting from one pip. Uh, with a $200 deposit. Uh, apart from that, I would like to make a comment about uh, Fidelis Capital Markets. We are QRSTP broker, and with that said, 
uh, I mean that we want our clients to make profits. We are on the side of a trader. We try to accommodate uh, the best market prices, the best execution. And when uh, our clients, our traders make profits, they uh, remain with us for a longer time, and this is what we want. Great. So take advantage of the markets, guys. Uh, I'm glad that you have joined today's session with us, uh, and I hope that you have learned something. It was not a usual session that we would have all the time, uh, but at the end, it's worth to know the variables around the market rather than just the technicals all the time. Uh, so look into the Italian uh, banking crisis right now. Look into the U.S. presidential elections. Look into gold and how the world central banks and how the world banks are reacting to, to the gold exchanges as well because uh, they get uh, anxious by, by the time they see that uh, there is more and more activity on gold. Uh, good example, SCB, uh, the, the SEB bank of uh, Sweden has just uh, banned one of the largest gold exchanges uh, in Europe. So look into all of the, these. They all mention one thing. There is a likelihood that we are heading towards another big crisis. I don't want to be too negative, but uh, every crisis for a Forex trader is an opportunity. So don't be too negative, but look at things from an opportunity side. Crisis means volatility. Volatility means opportunity. So that's it so far for today. Adamus, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jakub. Bye, everybody. Take care for now. Have a great day ahead. Bye-bye.